six. Swollen rivers breach their banks and overwhelm dams across Oregon as heavy rain drives those rushing waters. Conditions are the worst in Lane County as the region gets inundated with water. We got through the snow, we'll get through this. This morning, the Red Cross is sheltering some hard hit residents. Plus, a 73 year old Portland institution is possibly on the verge of shutting down. You ever been in there? The bleachers, man, the, just the beauty. There's beauty inside it. Why Portland Meadows may become a warehouse. And the Virginia Cavaliers are national champions after an overtime thriller. They took down Texas Tech's number one defense to claim their first title in school history. KGW News at Sunrise starts right now. And we begin at 6 o'clock with a live look courtesy of photojournalist Eric Patterson. He is out in the Linton neighborhood. He's kind of near the St. John's Bridge this morning and just another soggy shot on this Tuesday morning. All right, it is a Tuesday. It's April the 9th, as a matter of fact. Nina's going to have our morning rush here in about five minutes. But Rodney Hill, let's start yes, with sir. you and your forecast. You wouldn't know it right now, but picture a glorious day shaping yes. up. Yes. <laughs> I mean, don't picture too glorious. <laughs> I don't want you to disappoint yourself. Here's a look. Uh, so we have some rain areas out there right now, but most of that's going to be gone by 8 o'clock, and we'll see a shower chance, but really pretty quiet. 48 degrees out the door at the bus stop, and then just a spotty shower chance. Really, sun breaks pretty dry at about 60 degrees when the kids get out of school. Here's the radar right now. By the way, it is snow up in the mountains. You can see the drying that's about ready to move in. Here's Chris McGinnis. All right, Rod, photojournalist Dave Angier getting in the mix in Clark County. Let's take you there and he is literally hopping on the freeway at SR 14. I wouldn't do this, but he's getting on right now at SR 14 and I 5 South and you can see the drive obviously plugged up on that side of town and that's pretty normal for this hour of a Tuesday morning drive. Quick look at the band field. This is the inbound commute near Lloyd traffic getting a little busier there as well. Guys, we'll check out those building drive times coming up in just a few minutes. OK, we'll see you. Thank you very much, Chris. It's 602 now to Lane County and depending on where you live there, evacuation orders remain in place. Rivers have spilled over their banks. Christine Pitawanich is tracking the flooding for us this morning. And Christine, we really feel for the people who are dealing with all of this. Yeah, Brenda, they're just about ready for it to all end. They're worried about the water levels, hoping they don't go up much more. But let me give you an idea of where this is all happening. So it's south of Portland, uh, Mount Pisgah, really, and Cottage Grove up there. You can see the map moving north. It's supposed to be moving south. But let me give you an idea of what we're looking at in that area in Lane County, a pathway in a Eugene Park totally submerged in the Corvallis and Brownsville area drivers and people living there just trying to deal the best they can with all the water for people living in Cottage Grove. The high water also nerve wracking, especially for some who are living in a 55 and older community that we checked in on. They were told to leave. Then there is a huge landslide along Highway 58 in the Eugene area. It's supposed to be cleaned up today, but what's sticking around the flood water people living nearby are worried about how much higher that water is going to go. Scared, worried. My chickens are out there in that coop. I'm really worried about them. Um, I just never expected this to happen. So right now, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is releasing record amounts of water from the Darina Reservoir, more than what was released during the 1996 flood. The reason, of course, is the combination of the rainfall that we've had, as well as the snow melt, putting dams at near 100 percent capacity. Back to you. All right, Christine, thanks a lot. Tim Gordon will join us in the next half hour with some of the flooding concerns in Marion County, but a lot of you are helping us out with the weather covers this morning as well. Viewer photos, viewer video, telling the story around the area. This is Columbus Park in Lebanon. Now, a viewer of ours sent this in. That's a playground surrounded by water. This was taken yesterday afternoon. The viewer's name is Sean, and he says his kids, <laughs> clearly you can see by this video, they weren't bothered by the rain because, well, he says they're Oregonians. <laughs> but the flooding did get bad enough to actually cause that playground to to move at one point. I don't know how much water is underneath it, but enough to get it moving. And some of the play structure was actually starting to move a little bit also. There's quite a few parks around the area that are flooded right now. This is actually Heb Park along the Willamette and West Lane. You know, my kids play soccer there for many years, oh, and wow. I've seen them play in those puddles like that. I mean, they become basically mini lakes. Uh, Alton Baker Park in Eugene also underwater this morning. So be sure to keep sending us in those weather photos. We will share them. We love them. 
Please use the hashtag IamUpPDX. And as always, stay with us for continuing weather coverage both here on TV and online. You can find the latest updates on our website as well as our KGW weather app. It is 6.05. Let's get to some other local headlines this morning. A judge is ruling against a request to move Jeremy Christian's trial out of Multnomah County. Christian is accused of stabbing three men on a MAX train almost two years ago. Two of the men died. Christian's attorneys argued there was so much negative publicity surrounding the case that it would be impossible for him to get a fair trial locally. While the judge agreed that there was extensive adverse coverage of his case, she said that was not enough to prove the jury pool would be tainted. Trial is set to begin in June. After months of speculation, Portland Meadows could soon close. It's the only commercial horse racing track still operating in Oregon, but now its sale is pending. Our news partner, The Oregonian, reports a San Francisco company has applied for a permit to build a huge distribution warehouse on that 116-acre property. We talked with a former employee who worked at the track for 12 years. She says this closure will impact a lot of people's ability to make a living. It's going to have such a tremendous impact on the horsemen of, you know, this area. Uh, horses are going to be impacted too. I mean, thousands of jobs are going to be lost from the trainers, the owners who own the racehorses, the farriers, the veterinarians, the grooms. So many people make their livelihood through racing in the Northwest. Portland Meadows races horses in the fall and the winter and then in the off season. It's a place for people to gamble and bet on horse races around the country. The Oregon Racing Commission confirms Portland Meadows has not applied to renew its racing license. Just about seven minutes after six o'clock now, one of the national stories we're keeping an eye on this morning is the latest shakeup in President Trump's cabinet. This morning, we're learning that the head of the Secret Service will leave his post. Well, this comes just a day after the Homeland Security Secretary announced her resignation. As NBC's Tracy Potts explains, these changes are part of an effort to get tougher at the border. Good afternoon. Uh, Texas President Alice, Trump Secret is Director. replacing Secret Just Service as, uh, Director Randolph uh, Alice one day after his boss, Fox. Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen, was forced to resign. It appears that anyone who wants to tell the emperor that he has no clothes is going to is going to get Ousted. Despite Nielsen's continued support, I share the president's goal of securing the border. She and President Trump disagree on how to stop migrants from crossing the border. A record 100,000 just last month. Three U.S. officials tell NBC Mr. Trump wants to reinstate the family separation policy that led to children being held in cages. We still have thousands of children who have been separated from their parents and not reinstated uh, half a year later. Uh, that's unacceptable. The shakeup at Homeland Security will leave six top positions without permanent replacements. I'm concerned. I'm concerned of a growing void of leadership within the Department of Homeland Security. What happens if we're ever really in a crisis? What happens if, if we find ourselves, you know, the, the victim of a terrorist attack or in a war? It's getting tough with half a dozen key positions open at Homeland Security as the agency braces for more. And a setback for the president, a federal judge ruled on Monday that the administration cannot force asylum seekers back over the border to Mexico while they wait to see a judge here. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. Coming up on 610 this morning, time for your morning rush. Attorney General William Barr will testify before the House Appropriations Committee today. The main focus, the Mueller report. Lawmakers want some answers as to why only four of the 400-page Mueller report has been made public. Barr has said he plans to release a redacted version of the full report by mid-month. Tensions are escalating between the U.S. and Iran this morning. The State Department is designating Iran's Revolutionary Guard as a terrorist organization. It's the first time the U.S. has labeled another country's military as a terrorist group. So in response, Iran is designating our Central Command, which oversees military operations in the Middle East, as a terror organization as well. People in Israel are voting today. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is seeking a record fifth term, but has faced a lot of backlash and negativity recently. He faces a strong challenge from Benny Gantz, his former head of the Israeli army. 
actress Felicity Huffman has pled guilty to a federal charge in the college admission scandal. She admitted to paying $15,000 for someone to correct the answers on her daughter's SAT scores. In a statement, Huffman claimed full responsibility, apologizing to her daughter who did not know about the scam. Virginia outlasted Texas Tech in a thrilling overtime win last night, earning their first national title in school history. The final score was 85 to 77. Virginia was out for revenge after making a different kind of history last year. They were number oh, one rated, yeah. being knocked out in the first round by a 16 seed. So now they're back. They won the whole thing. What a cool story. Can't be mm. mad at them nope. after that. No and way. Well rested after <laughs> exiting the tournament so early. Yeah. There we go. There you go. <laughs> and it paid off. They're ready it? to go. <laughs>